Welcome to the Milestones Motivation and Money Podcast, hosted by Angel Radcliffe. Tune in as we discuss finances, success stories, and inspiring vibes that will help nurture growth. All right, welcome to the podcast. It's Angel Radcliffe. It's Miss RMBA. And on today's episode, we are going to stray a little bit away from our regular scheduled programming. But I guess since it's a brand new show and we're still in season one, we haven't quite struck up that um, accord yet. So um, still related to the money subject, but by now I'm sure Everyone's heard of uh, everything that's going on in the news and the media. So very much of a trending topic with uh, coronavirus or COVID-19. And I want to talk about how this is definitely affecting your budget because uh, a lot of us will see uh, the, if you've been in the stores lately, you see the shelves are getting empty and people are stockpiling. And anytime that there's some sort of pandemic that goes on, this is typically what happens. And um, of course, when you're stockpiling, this is not in your budget. So I um, want to give some tips and talk about how you can really deal with situations like this um, to, to keep your sanity, but also kind of keep your money in check because there's so much that's going on, giving people very high anxiety. Uh, some people don't necessarily know what to do in a situation like this, or um, some of us are just not prepared. And I, I can talk about it from my own personal standpoint, whereas I went to three stores before I found toilet paper last weekend. And I was like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, you you may have a schedule of a particular store that you shop at or places that you go and you may not be able to find those regular things that you buy that are within your budget. So now what do you do? You're stuck at purchasing things at a higher price. So it's like, how do you deal with that? Right. So that's that's exactly what I'm going to touch on today. And um should be very interesting because this I'd say the last few um well the last week and a half not a few weeks this this is all just uh coming about the last week and a half when I'm seeing the stores um very crowded and the shelves pretty empty and it's I mean my pockets are taking a hit so I know you know it's affecting other people and I'm starting to see people post on social media so let's dig into it Okay, so before we really get into the things that you need to do to prepare your pockets and your finances for this pandemic, um, if you are listening and you're one of the people that really haven't heard about coronavirus or you don't know the symptoms, let me just go over that really quick. Um, It's coronavirus, according to the CDC, is a very high strain of the flu. Um, Some of the symptoms are shortness of breath, coughing, fever. So if you're having any of that, make sure you get yourself checked out. If people around you are experiencing those symptoms, um, just make sure that you are, you know, keeping yourself safe, um, staying away from those crowds, you're using sanitizer, you're washing your hands. Um, You're just being very cognizant of your surroundings. A lot of companies have Uh, enforce these work from home policies. Uh, There's a lot of events that are being canceled. I was very surprised to see South by Southwest canceled. Coachella is being postponed. Um, So stay in tune with the news so you can see what is going on. Go to the CDC's website. um, Keep in touch as far as um, everything that's going on because this is seeming like it's pretty serious. And I am for one of those. Okay, hold on, hold on. I'm one of those people that definitely knows that... um, People have died and been diagnosed uh, at higher rates than coronavirus. But this is still something that is very serious because one thing that I am constantly seeing on social media is um, how people are posting and saying, okay, people have have died of heart disease or cancer or AIDS. And why are people panicking about coronavirus? Like, um, well, first of all, this is something that's clearly a viral infection. Um, You can carry it from one person to another. So it's seeming to be airborne. And I mean, anything that's like that, that you can obtain from touching someone, breathing in air, um, that's a very serious issue. So I hope people really take this serious and stop comparing it to other um, ailments and diseases. Um, 
and we can all keep ourselves safe. So let's hop into some of the financial aspects of what's going on. So I can tell you in the last week, I've spent more money on groceries and household supplies than my monthly budget. And why is that? It's because I typically go to Sam's Club, I go to Target, and I have a set number of things that I purchase. Well, going into those stores, a lot of the shelves are empty, even bottled water. I went to Sam's Club to purchase bottled water. I usually purchase in bulk. I was so surprised that it was gone. Even this Sam's Club brand, which is the cheapest brand that you can purchase, which is, I believe, $3 for for like the 36 bottles of water and I was like are you kidding me and I went to the next store then I went to the next store and I'm like how are all of these things out of stock and this is before I realized people were stockpiling I was just like okay maybe they're not in stock and I was like okay people must be stockpiling and I saw the news and I was like okay so I was forced to really buy a more expensive brand of bottled water that I normally don't buy um I did not have any toilet paper at home. I I was down to my last two rolls. (laughs) So I typically travel and I'm usually not home. And so lately I've been home. And so um, I'm, I'm like, okay, let me buy some more items. And I went to purchase toilet paper. The brand that I typically purchase was not available. Um, Even the cheapest brand was not available. So which made me go to a CVS. Of course, if you go to like a a corner drugstore, Walgreens, CVS, it's going to be a little bit more pricier than buying it in such as like a Walmart, a Target or a big box brand because uh, those are smaller stores. They don't necessarily sell the larger packs. You're going to get like a four pack, a six pack, and they're going to charge you like double the price. So I ended up paying more than I typically would. Um, I looked for sanitizer. First of all, I've always been a germaphobe. I've been a germaphobe forever. My friends would tease me for uh, as many packs of wet ones I would pick up in the Target aisle during checkout. Well, I only had one pack left in my purse. I was like, let me just pick up some sanitizer. Let me pick up some wet ones. Could not find any. Couldn't find. I was like, this is ridiculous. You can't find sanitizer. You can't find wet ones. So I was like, let me go on Amazon. Went on Amazon. People, you know what? Sellers are really capitalizing off of this because I noticed a pack of wet ones, which is typically a dollar, anywhere from one dollar to one dollar and ninety cents, depending on where you live. I typically pay a dollar and fifty nine cents at Target. Um, if you buy a pack of ten, it's usually cheaper. You can probably pay eight dollars. Well, people on Amazon were selling those for seventy five dollars. Absolutely ridiculous. Which no, I did not pay that much. Um, and I was like, this is just insane. But I started to just buy groceries and just buying some different things and thinking of like, what do I need in case something happens and we're just quarantined in the home, right? Because I'm seeing this happen in other countries. And I started to make a list. And so that's, of course, the first thing that you need to do is before you go crazy and you just start throwing things in your cart and you find yourself spending absurd amount of money um, that's beyond your budget or something that you may not be able to afford. Of course, some people... Um, may have a credit card or some people may have the money and savings. Um, Even if you do do have the extra cash, you want to be smart before you go out and you just buy. And of course, um, something like this we can't control, but you still want to be smart about making these decisions. Make a list so that you know what you're doing before you go into the store. Don't just go into the store because once you see all the people, you're going to get a little stir crazy. And of course, it becomes like this mob mentality because you see the you see the next person piling things in their cart and then you're like, hold on, if they're buying these things, maybe I need to purchase these things. And no, you don't just buy the things that you need to purchase. So make your list, your household items, if you need cleaner items, if you need personal sanitary items, um, of course, food, what type of food items are you going to need? Those staple items, things that are not going to spoil. Uh, my mom is always saying canned goods, you got to buy canned goods. <laughs> so make sure you get your canned goods. Uh, make sure you check the expiration date of these items because if you're going to stockpile food, uh, you don't want it to expire. So anything that you're going to buy that's going in your refrigerator, um, you want to buy things that are not going to 
uh, if you're going to buy things in bulk, make sure it's not going to expire in three, four days. So if you're going to buy fruits and veg- veggies, you probably can't buy three to four weeks of fruits and veggies. So don't go crazy there. Um, people who are doing the stockpiling, the things that you can buy in bulk, of course, um, spaghetti, elbow macaroni, ramen, top ramen. Who remembers that, right? <laughs> there's so many things that you can buy um, that you can keep in the cabinet. Of course, like there's like the the prepared um, noodles and the prepared rice that comes in the packet and you just heat it up. But you can also buy the kind that you actually have to cook. Make sure you get like sauces and seasonings. And of course, if you're going to buy any type of meat, you can freeze your meat. Um, there are some people who who buy frozen fruit the mixed fruit and they may want to make a smoothie or you can buy fresh fruit and cut it up and freeze it um, to keep it from spoiling you can even buy your veggies and chop those up and freeze them to keep them from spoiling but uh, you can't really freeze lettuce (laughs) you can freeze spinach so that is that is a good thing can freeze some spinach I think if if you try to freeze your lettuce and you're going to try to save it for a sandwich or something it's not going to turn out too well (laughs) it's a different texture so be smart about these things that you are stockpiling definitely get some toilet paper because I was a little concerned. I'm like, why are people stockpiling toilet paper? Like toilet paper is not going to keep you from getting the coronavirus. <laughs> toilet paper is not, but you definitely want water. Um, buy as many cases of water as you can. Water is fairly cheap for a case of water. So I typically, uh, I, I'm a single woman. I typically keep two to three cases of water at home anyhow. And I, I drink a lot of water. I do try to get my my eight glasses of water a day. Um, I am one of those people who drink filtered water, bottled water. I don't drink water out of the sink unless it's a last resort, unless I'm just dying of thirst and there's nothing else to drink. <laughs> so if you maybe you have a family of three, maybe you have a family of five, buy as many cases of water as you need. Keep some in your car, your garage, wherever you need to keep them. Um, I would definitely recommend doing that. And then it's like, how do you deal with this from, you know, your budget standpoint, if you actually have a budget and you're keeping track of your budget. And I say actually have a budget because I know there are people who don't have a budget, although you should. And we'll get into that on another episode, right? Um, If you, here's a plug. If you don't have a copy of my book, Ballin' on a Budget, feel free to pick it up on Amazon.com. You can search the book Ballin' on a Budget or search Angel Radcliffe. So it's a workbook I use in my workshops in teaching people how to actually create their budget from paper to an electronic version. But anyhow... So if you already have a budget in place and you're buying all these items and you're stockpiling, if you're stockpiling for weeks, if you've gone a little overboard and you're stockpiling for months, then when you go in to adjust your budget, you want to make sure you spread the those expenses across those particular months so it doesn't look like you overspent in one particular month. So let's say that you spent... Let's say your normal cost is $200 a month for groceries and you spend $600 this month because you you stockpile for three months because you think, I don't know, you think you're going to get coronavirus or you think the U.S. is going to get shut down and we're going to be stuck in our homes. So make sure that you spread those items across the three month period so it doesn't look like you just spent all that money on groceries for one month because those groceries are going to last you for uh, those few months if you're stockpiling that, that many items or if it's household items. If you bought two months of household items, make sure you spread that amount for those expenses across that two month time period um, so that next month that amount is already populating. Um, and this is, of course, whatever app you're using, you should be able to do that. I use Mint. So a lot of you who've been following me for a while know that that's one of my favorite budget apps to use. And it's very easy to do to go in and, and allocate that particular amount to the next month. You can split expenses. You can take one purchase and break it down into several different categories. So if um, you have several different categories on one receipt, you can break it down um, as much as you like. You can, you can change the date to a past date, a future date, so it allocates to the appropriate month. So um, those are some tips, but be realistic. Don't buy items that you know you're not going to eat. Don't purchase items that you know you're not going to use in your house just because uh, people are stockpiling. Make sure that they're going to come into play at some point because I think, you know, one thing people do when they stockpile, you try to buy the things that, of course, 
that are not going to expire. So let's think about some of the major things that goes into this tuna and spam. <laughs> and what's really funny is my mom, we were discussing last night, like some things that I should buy. And, and, I, and I have to admit, I don't have a lot of canned goods <laughs> because I'm, I'm never really home. I try to buy things. I, I typically do my grocery shopping like once every week or once every other week because I don't like to keep a lot of things in my fridge or my cabinet. So I was like, okay, let me make my list and get some things that I should buy. And my mom's like, you should buy tuna. Like, I don't eat tuna. I'm not going to stockpile tuna. Like, I'll buy the chicken in the can. Um, I'm not going to purchase spam because I don't eat spam. So I'm not going to go and waste my money on that. So um, if you don't eat these things, don't purchase them. Don't purchase them because you know that they're in a can and they don't expire. Like, um, you may end up donating them later. So make sure that you are realistic about the items that you are purchasing because at the end of the day, this is your money. And let's look at the past week that we've had. Like the stock market is is really down right now. We've uh, most of us, most of us have, have lost a lot of money. I know that I've lost a ton of money um, in the past week. And especially Monday morning, I was like, oh my God, I almost had a, I, I'm not even gonna say I almost had a heart attack, but my heart did drop. I lost a lot of money and then again, today um, where I was like, this is so ridiculous. I hope it doesn't get any worse. And just three weeks ago, the stock market was really great where I had money in stocks and I thought about taking it out because um, you know, I'm in the process of purchasing a home and I thought about, hey, maybe I should sell off these stocks and use it towards my home purchase, um, which I already have the cash for, for my down payment. But I was like, okay, maybe I could get the home I really want. I could put this money towards a better home. And I was like, no, you know what? I'm going to just be modest. I'll leave the money there. And now I I lost all this money. And I I was thinking about that. It's Thursday. Um, Today is the 12th. I've been thinking about that for three days straight, but I know I can't dwell on it. Um, if you did lose money in the stock market, don't pull your money out. This is <laughs> this is another thing. I know it's not really related to the, the food items we were discussing. Don't pull your money out. Let it sit there. The stock market will go back up. But um, that's another reason why you shouldn't waste money on, on unnecessary items if you're going to be doing some stockpiling. But um, you guys, that those are my tips. And keep your sanity. Read a book. Stay in the house, do some Netflix, um, try to find some things that are not going to make you a little bit more stir crazy than what the media is making us. Because I feel like every time I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, it's coronavirus, coronavirus, coronavirus. And then, of course, yes, I'm doing this podcast about coronavirus, how to deal with the pandemic and your budget. And I sat with I was actually going to do this uh, five days ago when I, I noticed that I couldn't purchase toilet paper. And I I was like, okay, maybe people don't really want to hear about coronavirus anymore because I was really tired of hearing about coronavirus. I said, if one more person mentions coronavirus, I'm going to scream. And I actually went down my Facebook timeline. Everyone who was posting about coronavirus, I was like, snooze for 30 days, snooze for 30 days. <laughs> like, I don't want to log on here and hear about coronavirus. But um, I just felt very compelled to to push this message out on the podcast. Um, very quick episode just to give some tips because I, I did see so many people, you know, asking and uh, how do they deal with this and talking about the amounts of money that they're spending. So um, let me just let me just go over those tips one more time and we'll get on to an, another episode on another topic that's not coronavirus related. So uh, make sure that you make your list. Make sure that you are being realistic about the items that you are going to purchase, uh, whether it's household items, whether it's grocery items that you're going to use those items. Make sure you're going to purchase staple items. So staple foods are foods that can remain in your cabinets that um, are not going to really spoil in like a day or two, like or in, in a week, like fruits or veggies. Make sure you're checking the expiration date, even on canned goods and seasonings. Let me say this really quick. Up until like three years ago, I never knew that seasonings expired. Don't judge me. I was cleaning out my cabinets and (laughs) I was like, I I don't know. I looked at the back of a seasoning. I was like, okay, these, I was like, when did, does pepper expire? Like, don't judge me guys. Like I never knew that. So yes, check the date on everything. (laughs) Um, Make sure that if you already have your budget that you spread the 
costs of the things that you are purchasing. So if you purchase two, three months, make sure you spread it within your budget so it doesn't look like that you've overspent. Again, make sure you don't go and pull the money out of your stocks. Let it sit. The market's going to go back up. Um, if anything, look at 0809. Like that was really bad. Um, and of course, the market bounced back. I know it's going to take time, but but just during this time, just make sure that keep your sanity. Don't go crazy. Don't don't participate in the mob action. What everyone's doing. Don't go out and buy 50 rolls of toilet paper, but buy your water, buy the other things that you need. And you guys be safe. Wash your hands. Get your sanitizer. Um, and then I'll see you guys on the next episode. So thank you guys for tuning in. Again, it's Angel, Miss RMBA. If you're not already following me, follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And I hope you guys. Thanks have for listening. The tips Stay connected with soon. Angel online on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Miss RMBA. That's M I S S R M B A. Be sure to subscribe and review. Join us next time as we continue to empower you through milestones, motivation, and money.